today's essential question, where did the oxygen that we breathe come from? Now remember, the oxygen that we breathe is in the form of O2. That means the oxygen that you breathe is not a single oxygen atom, but two oxygen atoms bonded together to form a molecule of oxygen. And a reminder, the topic is still the development of Earth. This is our fourth essential question, our last essential question for this topic. Our first left-hand column title, The Lack of Oxygen. So your left-hand title, The Lack of Oxygen. Almost all life on the planet depends on oxygen, but that early atmosphere, again, there were more than one, so I should say atmospheres, lacked any free oxygen, meaning the oxygen in the form of O2 that you and I are breathing right now. So it's important to understand how this element, meaning oxygen, became so abundant in the atmosphere today. Again, that's a, a change from about 0% free oxygen to today about 20% free oxygen. So let's start with some definitions. Cyanobacteria. Now, it's a particular phylum of a type of photosynthetic bacteria, which we can also call blue-green algae. Now, the reason that we're going to talk about cyanobacteria is because cyanobacteria are prokaryotes that get their energy, their food, through the process called photosynthesis, which we've already covered in this class. And fossil evidence appears to date cyanobacteria to about three and a half billion years ago. And we are going to talk about cyanobacteria because it is thought that they were the first organisms to photosynthesize. If you remember, photosynthesis is a biological process, meaning it's carried out by living things. And in that process, plants, or what we are going to discuss, cyanobacteria, make organic compounds that they eat for food, and they make that food out of water and carbon dioxide using light energy from the sun. But as a byproduct, from their perspective, a waste product, they produce free oxygen, O2. Photosynthesis is an essential, life-sustaining process which takes place in plants, algae, and certain protists. It uses captured light energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into stored chemical energy in the form of sugars, while releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. Looking at its most basic chemical equation, we find that six molecules of carbon dioxide react with six molecules of water in the presence of light to produce one molecule of the sugar glucose, C6H12O6, plus six molecules of diatomic oxygen. In reality, photosynthesis is not quite as simple as that. In fact, it is carried out in two distinct series of complex biochemical steps known as the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis and the light-independent reactions of photosynthesis. In many ways, photosynthesis is the key to life on Earth. Its importance cannot be overstated because photosynthesis is responsible for creating essentially all of the food and all of the oxygen on our planet. So without it, most living things would soon cease to exist. So oxygen in the atmosphere, again, according to uh, current theories, oxygen in the atmosphere was released by an ancient blue-green bacteria that we refer to as cyanobacteria. These organisms conducted photosynthesis, which, as we defined, is a chemical reaction that converts carbon dioxide and water into glucose, which is a, a sugar, a food. A byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen gas. 
Now, as that population of cyanobacteria increased, meaning they were more successful, the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere slowly began to increase as well. Next definition, ozone, which is a type of oxygen molecule, and it's also one of the layers of our atmosphere. Now, ozone is a special type of oxygen molecule because it is not a single oxygen atom. It is not a diatomic oxygen molecule, meaning two oxygens, O2, like three oxygens. It's actually O3. It is three oxygen atoms bonded together. Now, this is special, and it has a special name. And you've probably heard of this before because ozone is actually in the stratosphere in the high enough concentrations that we call it the ozone layer. Now, like I said, this is important because ozone absorbs ultraviolet radiation, or UV rays. And it takes those UV rays and it reduces the concentration of those dangerous high-energy forms of light. It reduces the concentration that reaches Earth's surface. Next definition, geosphere. A geosphere directly translates to Earth ball or Earth globe. Simply put, it's Earth's inner, outer core, mantle and crust all together. It's the rock part of Earth. Cambrian explosion. Again, we've already mentioned the Cambrian Explosion, but we want to make sure that we are remembering off the top of our head. The Cambrian Explosion was a period of rapid growth in life's biodiversity, which was thought to occur somewhere between 550 and 485 million years ago. All right, new left-hand column. New left-hand column. The concentration of oxygen increases. Again, we are transitioning from this period of about 0% oxygen to our current day level of about 20% oxygen. So blue-green bacteria form these mound-like structures called stromatolites. These stromatolites were formed in the oceans. Now, the oldest stromatolite fossils have been dated to almost 4 billion years ago. The free oxygen that these organisms began to produce would react with other elements in the ocean, like iron, for example. Those reactions produced iron-rich minerals, and these minerals became hematite, magnetite, cedrite, pyrite, and olivine. As the concentration of iron in the ocean diminished because it was reacting with this oxygen, photosynthesis carried out by the cyanobacteria that we've talked about began to release free oxygen into the atmosphere. Now, at first, this oxygen in the atmosphere did not accumulate. It did not build up. Instead, it reacted with other elements that were found on land because oxygen is actually a very reactive element, and it will not form free oxygen, meaning the O2 that you and I need to breathe. It will not form that free oxygen if there are other elements available to bond with. So once these elements were all exhausted and used up, the oxygen began to accumulate in the form of free oxygen in the atmosphere. So about uh, two, and, uh, two and a half billion years ago, there was relatively little oxygen in the atmosphere. In fact, oxygen still made up only about 1% of the atmosphere. Now, by about two billion years ago, the concentration began to increase at a fairly steady and rapid pace. Then about 700 million years ago, it had reached the levels that we experience today, which is about 20% concentration. So as the oxygen built up to that 20% concentration, more ozone, which again is O3, it's a three oxygen 
um, molecule. This ozone also started to form. Now, a layer of ozone in the atmosphere blocked some of the uh, sun's harmful UV radiation. Now, the formation of the ozone layer allowed more terrestrial life, meaning life on Earth, to form and therefore evolve. The rise in oxygen, also ozone, began near the start of the Cambrian explosion, which again is a period of rapid evolution that happened somewhere around 550 to 485 million years ago. Now, the rise in oxygen, and also ozone, again, allowed for life on land to evolve and expand, which that expansion of evolution is what led to the Cambrian explosion. At this point, you should be able to answer today's essential question. Where did the oxygen, again, in the form of O2, where did the oxygen that we breathe come from? So please write your answer to this question in the summary box at the bottom of your notes.